what we're doing on YouTube is creating a story using the Raspberry Pi, Legos, and a basic wood set that I make. It's all handmade. And that's a good product, you know, that's all that's really good. But I've been asked, really, how does this fit into the school system? How am I supposed to learn from it? Well, what you're looking at is the end product. You know? And that's good. We, have, we need an end product, but there's a process that gets us there. Now in my class, what I, what I do is start, you know, we're going to go with one, two, three, four, and five. And the first thing I ask in my class is, what problem do we need to solve? So we need a problem. And what problem do we need to solve? Well, as an example, I've used, we want to use the Raspberry Pi to catch a criminal in the act. So how do we do that? Well, we know we've got some technology that we're going to use. We're going to use the Pi. And the Pi itself isn't going to help us. It needs to be connected with some kind of device. So we're going to use some type of sensor, right? A sensor you could use that when you cross over the sensor, an alarm goes off. So we're going to use a passive infrared sensor. A passive infrared sensor. So we have two pieces of technology. We have the Pi and a passive infrared sensor. That's good. We're also going to use Python and code to program our Pi. So now we've just asked ourselves a question. We have a problem that we need to solve. Now how do we go about solving it? Well, the first thing they're going to need to do, let me erase this for just a second. What they're going to need to do is figure out how. How do I use the Pi to solve my problem? Well, the first thing they need to learn is how does Python work with the Pi. The second thing they need to learn is how to draw the schematic, hopefully that's spelled right, the circuitry in order to connect the pi to the sensor. They need to do those two things. They're going to need to know some wiring and then how this all comes together. So the first thing they need to learn is how to use the technology itself. Once the way they've learned how to use the technology, then it has to go into a story. You want to see it in an application. Now this is where the fun begins. So we have to create a story. We have to create an idea for the story. We have to create the script, and the script will include everything from the setting to the description, S-C-R-I-P-I-T-O-N, that's good. Maybe even some sound effects. And maybe some dialogue. And that's going to fall into the script. So they need to put a story together. Once we've got a script, then we can actually create a storyboard for that script. So we'll create the storyboard. The storyboard is actually going to be the chronological events that we can see. So we want to be able to see the story before we create the story. And that's good. So right now, there are other tools out there. I'm using PowerPoint. There are some other storyboarding tools. Um, all of them good. But we need to be able to see the story. From that point, we're going to go ahead and create the story. You know, I like using uh, Hue, Hue, H-U-E. 
who has uh, some technologies out there and some applications that are really good for this type of event. I'm going to use stop motion, stop motion animation, and I'm going to use real time video. Now I use stop motion because I use Legos. And Legos, I think, are a good um, tool to use because it shows the movement, it shows interaction, and all that good stuff that you need for the actual story. But when we actually include the Pi in any peripheral device, we actually want to use real-time video because that's what's actually happened. You don't catch a criminal when he stopped. You actually have to see him in motion. So all that works real good. Now once we have all this together, then we can publish it. And where are we going to publish it to? YouTube, of course. Why not? We publish it, we're able to show it on YouTube, but then we want our friends and family and whoever else we want to watch it. And we want to get feedback. And feedback includes anything from, you know, did the motion move too fast, too slow, did you understand how it works, um, did you want to talk about the technology itself and how the Python works, how, you know, the Pi works and how the infrared sensor connects to it all, you know, all of that's now ready for discussion. And that you could use in the classroom. And that's pretty much how the digital storytelling process works as a result of using Raspberry Pi.